The use of tear gas, pepper spray and wooden bullets by police during recent protests are now under review. Authorities say these tactics can be necessary to quell unrest. Thank you so much for joining us tonight for 10 TV News at 6. I'm Tracy Townsend. Penn Investigates has found concern over their use, which can involve long term injuries and lasting effects. Here's Chief Investigative Reporter Bennett Haverly, and there is a warning for you. Some of the images you're about to see do show some violence. Hey, this, this cruiser's gonna get out of here. We're gonna make. Get this cruiser out of here. Move from this cruiser. This encounter between Columbus police and protesters. May have been the match that lit the tender box. You just hear constant glass breaking. Words filled the streets on May 28. But so did objects hurled at officers. Tempers boiled over, and what began as a demonstration over George Floyd's death in police custody devolved into destruction. Arrests were made, dozens of officers were injured. But so too were people who gathered to protest police brutality. Some claim they were exposed to more of it. Ten investigates captured this video on the night of May 30th as protesters stood outside a church before curfew. A few water bottles had been thrown at officers. Police responded with tear gas and firing wooden bullets. What I thought was overly aggressive and inappropriate and not at meeting my or the community's standards for engaging peaceful protesters. After Mayor Andrew Ginther called on citizens to report Columbus police, hundreds of emails filled the city's inbox. More than 270 of them either expressed support for Columbus police or criticized the mayor. But 375 emails alleged there was excessive force or inappropriate behavior from officers. Like this one that appears to show officers pepper spraying a woman in the back of the head as she walks away. She was walking away from you! This video that shows a woman holding a sign in the middle of Broad Street when she's shot by a wooden bullet. And this, showing protesters seated near the State House sidewalk who were pepper sprayed at close range. We attempted to show this clip and others to Police Chief Thomas Quinlan, who said he couldn't comment without knowing all the context or allowing officers to have their say. 56 use of force incidents stemming from the protests are now under review by outside entities looking for policy violations that could result in officer discipline or even criminal charges. I mean, the, the folks at home are going to are going to say, you know, some of this behavior looks bad. And, and my question to the chief of police is, what do you say to that? I'm acknowledging you, to you that the optics in many cases look bad. The issue is, was it legal? Was it tactically sound? Was it medically safe? Was it legally safe? Uh, did the officers get it right or did they violate policy? I can't make that conclusion from watching a clip of a video without having any other facts. Uh, I owe it to the public and I owe it to the officers to have the facts, not just a gut reaction to a video that, that would look bad because all use of force, as I acknowledge, looks bad. I just thank God that, you know, I wasn't really, really hurt. I mean, more so shook up in my nerves being bad. Tamia Hayward wrote into the city to complain, sending in these photos of her car she says was damaged when police fired a beanbag filled with metal pellets. Tamia says she wasn't involved in the protest and had left her job as a nurse at a long-term care facility on High Street when, by happenstance, she drove into the crowd that had gathered. And next thing I know, they started firing rounds on me. Um, it just caught me off guard. It blew my mind. Hayward was arrested and charged with failure to disperse, a charge that was later dismissed. It blew my mind. That's, it really did blow my mind, and it concerns me. When they shot the first one, it missed me. But I, I literally watched him look at me and point it at me. And then I tried to turn around, but by the time I was turning around, it just hit me too fast. Kaya Minifield says she was protesting standing on the lawn of the state house when she says she was fired upon and struck by a wooden bullet. Her x-rays and medical records show the impact broke one of her fingers. At close range, what we find is that they can cause uh, significant and pretty dramatic injuries, especially when they hit the face or the head or 
the eyes. Dr. Rohini Har is an emergency medical physician in Oakland and the author of this 2017 study that looked into when police use less than lethal force, like wooden or rubber bullets. The study looked at 1,984 people who had been seen by doctors after being shot by these projectiles. Of those, 3% died and 15% suffered permanent disabilities. And even when there are riots, the use of crowd control weapons actually escalates tensions and creates chaos and stampedes and things like that. It does not, in any case that I've studied, de-escalate tensions. Har says there's no need for these types of weapons for crowd control. While Columbus has now banned the use of tear gas, Quinlan says removing other uses of force would take away tools from officers who need to control crowds. We have to act and we have to explain our actions. I would rather explain our actions than our failure to act. Now, Chief Quinlan also tells me that he believes when these outside agency reviews are completed that it will show that a lot of his officers did things right and when they did not, he says they will be held accountable. Neither the mayor's office nor Chief Quinlan would provide specifics on those 56 use of force incidents that are now under review. Reporting live downtown, Bennett Haverly, 10TV News.